In this next video, I'd like to discuss uh, DHCP and DNS forwarding. Um, if you want to take a look at my drawing here real quick, uh, this is a, I, I've added a DNS server if you followed my last video. Um, and the IP address for that DNS server, this is local, one that I maintain. And then um, we've got the, uh, Google's DNS server out here on the internet. Um, right now everything is set up statically on all these devices. Um, I've got static IP addresses set up. I'm not really, I have DHCP enabled on 1010.2.1 um, on the 1010.2 network and uh, but I'm not really using it right now but I want to go ahead and set that up so let's just uh, let's just jump into that right now. Okay, so here at my dashboard, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go on over to services, and let's look at the DHCT, DHCP service first. It's interesting the way this, this particular configuration is set up. Uh, if you hit view leases or configure static map, you're going to get the same exact uh, configuration window. But uh, let's just look view leases, static map, details. Okay, so under details, the first thing I want to do is I, I want to keep the IP address because I have that IP address set up, 1010.2.28, um, um, as being forwarded. Uh, I'm doing port forwarding on that particular uh, to that particular IP address from externally. So I, I want to go ahead and keep that. So I'm going to change my leasing um, for DHCP. So I, I'm going to change the range and I actually started at uh, at uh, 2.25. I don't really need all these IP addresses. Router, we know the gateway is going to be that. And uh, we're, we're using uh, DNS forwarding on this box. So for DCP uh, services, when uh, it, it sends out its leases, um, it's going to include the DNS as the local uh, gateway router address. And then the router itself will do the uh, DNS forwarding. We're going to go ahead and save that, and so now I want to I want to go ahead and reserve a um, an IP address for that one system. So I'm going to hit static map. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and configure a static map for my uh, Win Test Two device. We're going to create a new mapping. I'm going to give it an ID of Win Ten TST Two. Going to go ahead and give it the MAC address 00 colon 23 colon 24 colon 46 colon BF colon and 8D. Go ahead and give it the IP address. Now, if you if you get the MAC address wrong and you put something up here like a dash, I think it maybe will show me. Yes, if I just if I don't have the colons in place, it's going to say please enter please enter a valid MAC address, and so you need to have the colons uh, for the particular MAC address that you want to uh, you want to assign an IP address to, and I'll show you where I got that MAC address from in a minute. So. I want to keep the same, like I said, I want to keep the same IP address for that particular device. I'm going to hit save. And now I have a static mapping assigned to that MAC address. All right, so as you can see, I've got one static. I've got zero lease so far. I've got 25 IP addresses available. Got no leases yet, so. Okay, so I'm on... Uh, my Win 10 TST2. I've done an IP config all, and uh, I've got it statically set at 1010.2.28, which is the address that I just statically put in my DHCP server. I've also got a DNS server of 192.168.1.222 or 228 defined, and um, I just want to show you that uh, that if I hit that DNS server. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to make a DNS request directly to that server. So if I do an NS lookup of 8.8.8.8, .8 I'm actually going to hit the 192.168.1.228 DNS server. 
and I'm getting the name. It's actually going to go out and do the DNS lookup for me. But uh, when you do DHCP, um, you can allow your router to do a DNS forward, and and I'll show you how we uh, how that looks when we, we get done. So anyway, let's go ahead and get our DHCP IP address. Alright, before I do this, I just wanted to show you real quick. This is where I got that MAC address from. So when I did an IP config all on this box, the, my physical address is my media access control or MAC address. So that's where I got that number from. Notice how it uses dashes instead of colons. If you try to use dashes like I showed you on the, it's not going to allow you to put it in. So you have to use colons when you actually input a static uh, MAC address for DHCP on the edge router. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to obtain everything automatically. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say close. And as you saw, I lost uh, a connection immediately, um, and then it regained connection. So if I go back here and I do an IP config all again. So if you notice up here. When we had our original configuration set up, it's statically on the on the Windows box itself. DHCP enabled was set to no, and then we went and changed it, and it's now set to DHCP is now set to yes. So we're actually leasing or getting our IP address from the edge router. Um, one thing to note is if you notice up here, my DNS servers were set to 192.168.1.228, and now they're set to the edge router address or the gateway address depending on how you want to look at it so we're going to be doing DNS forwarding so again we look at our our block diagram I'm on this box here I've been leased this particular address that I have set up statically so this box knows about this workstation and is actually giving out this IP address all the time it's reserved this IP address for this box and we're going to hit 101021 in this particular case, um, if I go, let's go back to that box again. And if I do a NS lookup, if you notice this time, when I do an NS lookup, I'm actually hitting 10.10.2.1. I'm getting the same public IP address. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and talk about DNS forwarding for a little bit. Let me jump over here to, uh, to my diagram. Um, DNS forwarding. Okay, so um, when you first configure up your firewall, you you uh, configure the name servers that are going to be associated with the firewall, and then uh, for DHCP, um, when you set that particular uh, service up, you're going to be uh, doling out the DNS. IP addresses uh, that you want your workstations to use and you could uh, put either you know you could put this DNS server down here if you wanted this to be your 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 default DNS server for all your workstations that get a, a, an IP address from your DHCP server um, most of the time they want you to use DNS forwarding or at least that's the way that the, the, the default settings are for this particular router so um, your DNS server entry is going to be 10.10.2.1 in this particular case and uh, I have I have the DNS uh, name server set up to go up to here to 8.8.8.8, uh, .8 and you can always change that. But let's just take a look at that. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to set up these ports to listen in on uh, on port 53, which is DNS, and then intercept that. Um, well, you're not going to intercept it, but you're, you, if the request is made directly to uh, 10.10.2.1, then it's going to uh, forward the DNS request out. Um, it, it, like I said, if you statically have it set statically mapped up here, like this, this workstation is, has got a static IP address, and I, and I point it to this DNS server, it's going to allow that traffic to go through directly to that DNS server. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, anyway, let's just go ahead and look, take a look at what the, how that's set up. All right, so if we're going to go into here, we're going to go into services. And we're going to look at DNS. And even though this is DNS, this is actually just for DNS forwarding and for dynamic DNS. I really don't want to get into dynamic DNS. Um, 
there's a, a lot of spoofing can happen in dynamic DNS, and it's not, it's not necessarily a good idea. You, you may need to do it, but hopefully not. Uh, anyway, when you're doing DNS forwarding, you're actually telling what interface you want to listen for DNS requests on and then forward those on. In this particular case, we're, we're, we're uh, forwarding on Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. So that we're actually listening on those ports. So, But if you wanted to change the name server, um, that that's going to be uh, that it's actually going to forward to you have to go over here to the system area and it's over here in the, where it's called name server that you actually want to put and this is where you could put a secondary one you know if I wanted to if I wanted to put uh, if I wanted to change this and, and make this 192.168.1.228 and then if I wanted to add Google's and go 8.8.8 .8 .8, Right, so then now I've got a, a primary DNS server that I'm going to forward stuff to and a secondary. And I can go down here and just hit save and wait till it's done. So as you can see, there's really not a lot to DNS forwarding or DHCP. It's pretty easy to set up. Um, it's not that difficult if you want to make everything static. You don't have to set it up. Like I said, uh, I've only got DHCP set up on, on LAN 2. All right, well, I think that just about covers it for DHCP and DNS. Um, if there's something I missed or there's something you wanted to see, uh, give me a shout, send a comment, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. Um, I, continue, I plan to continue to do these videos. Um, as I go forward, as I get interested in stuff. So thanks for your time.